Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. I went online to become a private detective. It was a private detective school online, and I paid online. I never heard from them again. I thought to myself, I either got ripped off, or this is my first case. This is a journalistic podcast, Shannon. We vaccinate our listeners with answers. And I'm going to keep lip-syncing the important questions until TikTok gives me a show. Shannon, how can the moon landing be real if the moon itself is fake? It's not true, Mike. Oh, isn't it true, Shannon? You're fake. You're a hologram. One in five New Yorkers are food insecure. What's your solution for that, Mike? Fortune cookie. Because that's food and advice at the same time. Shannon, at least have the decency to backstab me, okay? You stab me in the front every time. Some fans can't watch the podcast because they're triggered by our sexuality. And message to those fans, we will leak a sex tape right into your mouth. This is Mike Vecchione Investigates. And you're not better than me. Welcome to another episode of Mike Vecchione Investigates, guys. You're not better than me. You're not better than Shannon. You're not better than Natalie, and you're not better than my guest today, Claudia Stavola. Claudia, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Comic, and now I find out writer. You didn't investigate thoroughly enough, wow. or you would have known that. I did know. <laughs> I knew that you were a stand-up comic because we worked together. That's correct. In a little place called New Jersey. Maybe you guys have heard of it. Classy. And But now, I didn't know. I mean, I, I don't know how good this is. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's a great book, but our fans, a low reading level. If you and know anything about our fan base, for. it's aimed for is fentanyl it? users. <laughs> are there a lot of are there? Um, there's uh, we have a bunch of fentanyl users. I've heard you talk as about it. fans, and uh, their reading level is very low. I heard the words are. Uh, I hope the words are big and simple. That's correct. Is it like Ned goes to the park? We leave out the verbs because okay. that's a bit much for them. verbs are tricky. <laughs> they They're really action are. words, and our our fans are mostly shut ins. Yeah, or they so. hang out at Tompkins Park doing heroin. <laughs> Tompkins Park or heroin. That would require going outside. I think they just live in their parents' basement and they do it there. This is a good point. But it's not good to laugh at them, Claudia. It's like we have to teach them. I'm laughing out of nervousness because I I know I shouldn't have done that. You wrote a book and it's clear by writing this book, you're like, I'm better than these people are. I'm going to come and do a victory lap in their face. Twice. Uh, Two times. On Sundays. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> so um, it's pretty great that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's been a long time, pre-pandemic, since we worked together yes. in the great state of New Jersey. I think it was Bananas. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, I was trying to remember, and I was yeah. like, what the hell was the name of the place we yeah. worked? And thank you for saying that, because it was driving me nuts. We both had electrifying sets. We really did. The crowd did. walked away dazed. They didn't know what hit them. They comedy, like, what the hell Comedy freight happened? train. Yeah, they think they were drugged with the uh, buffalo wings. The Eagles are undefeated. Our fans are reeling from that because all they watch is TV. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles on their way to a championship, 6-0. and Another win yesterday. The studio, there's cobwebs. Natalie asked me if I wanted uh, it all taken down, and I should have taken her up on it because this actually isn't for Halloween. This is just the state of the studio right now. We, just, we don't clean it. Don't we don't clean, clean it. Person. We get skanky, baby. We get as skanky as possible. You live hard, man. We live hard, and we're all on fentanyl, <laughs> apparently. Claudia, you brought it to my attention, well, and I'm just going to run with it. Fentanyl people love now, who do you bring with you? Things. You brought um, my buddy Jim. Jim. Yep. Jim is outside, Jim's and Jim outside. is uh, he gave me the peace sign. He's doing, but Jim looks intimidating. He's got that ball cap down. Yeah, because you don't know what's really. Well, working. if things don't happen the way that you want them to happen, Claudia, is that in the book where it, you bring a male uh, intimidator with you in order to leer at? me through the protected glass we're in a protected room right now and but when i go outside is something bad gonna happen to me you may end up having to do fentanyl with him that is what we have planned i might have to do jujitsu oh yeah jim jitsu that's that's too many syllables yeah jimbalaya will not like that jim (laughs) is jim a martial artist sometimes Mm. he does kung fu fighting but only to the song sounds like a threat it is sounds like a threat claudia now how did you guys meet 
Uh, through my sister. They, okay. They were friends for years. Right. And then uh, Jim and I became buddies as well. And right. uh, he does my website for me. Yeah. I pimp him out for projects. Hot. <laughs> and then he never lets me pay him. So, oh, my yeah. God. That's so hot. Isn't that that's sexy? That's so hot. I know. And I have my sunglasses on today. And people are like, Mike, why are you wearing your sunglasses? Because it's a very sexy episode. I thought it was We're because my sexy. smile is so bright that you're like, I don't want to be blinded. I can't take it. But That's so good. You did it like a dance move. Yeah, For those of you like, who can't afford a computer, Claudio started gyrating. <laughs> I'm, Can I say I'm that? I'm channeling my solid gold. You Not were that I remember that show or anything. No, we're so young. <laughs> we are so young. We're so young. And you were gyrating a little bit, and the kids call it twerking now. That's correct. They don't correct. call it gyrating anymore. I thought twerking was literally trying to like shake a dingleberry out of your ass. Like, oh, I was like, really? what are they doing? They look like something stuck, and they're trying yeah, to get rid of it. Something stuck is a baby, and women have the choice <laughs> whether to twerk it out or to keep it in. That's it's right. your body, and it's your, your choice, choice. And you're allowed to do what you want to do with it. Can't you can twerk the baby that? out. You can, but uh -huh. sometimes, well, I guess if you want to make the money, you got to twerk the baby out. Twerk the baby out. Yeah. 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 You got to Or get keep that it and let just digestion. <laughs> is that, is that, we're a heavy science podcast, so I think that makes sense somewhere. I can tell. I can tell. Mm. Okay. So tell me what you, how was your pandemic? I, I think I asked you to come on before and you, you, did. you said that you weren't available. You had some upstate things going on. I think you threw Jim's name in there. So what was happening? What upstate was your pre-pandemic and what was your pandemic like? And then talk to me about what uh, when you wrote this book. Okay. Well, pandemic was crazy because yeah. right before the pandemic in at the end of 2019, I, I was actually on stage at the stress factory and I hadn't been feeling well. Something was wrong. I had like this crazy pain in my neck and I had just gone for some MRIs. Yeah. And I get off stage and I see I have all these voicemails from my doctor's office and they're like, you need to get to an emergency room. You have a dissected artery in your neck. Oh, my God. So that was the beginning of the nightmare. So I do go to the emergency room and they're like, you also have a blood clot. So I was recovering from that pandemic hits and I hadn't been feeling well for a while. Mm -hmm. So. I was like, something's not right. I won't bore you with all the details, but long story short, I also had neuroendocrine cancer, which um, my cardiologist is the one who figured it all out because it was so weird and rare and the symptoms were crazy. And my primary care doctor sucks and he wears tight khaki high waters and <sighs> wouldn't listen to me. So I'm like, okay, maybe if you focused on your patients and not your tight ass, so then I go to the cardiologist. These primary care guys are all about just the golf yep. and the co-pays. I think they're buying stuff with the co-pays that are not a doctor fentanyl. related. They're buying they're fentanyl. They're probably buying fentanyl. <laughs> and they're buying like pizzas and treats and um, the khakis is like a golf, like whatever, a relaxed but they're like, fit they probably. They were too tight though. They were too tight. They were too tight. He had like male camel toe. Yeah. And uh, he wanted to be like a folk singer. And I'm like- Probably sleeping with his secretary. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> so yeah. So I uh, had surgery in April and um, then they recommended a second surgery, which I'm still in limbo on that. So I double ar an artery surgery? No, f for the cancer. Okay. Yeah. To remove it. Yeah, they removed where the primary tumor was, which was in my appendix. Oh my but God. there's a chance it could be in the small intestine. But again, I won't bore you with the specifics because it's really boring and intricate. But I opted to wait till my next scan at the beginning of the year. I just I don't want to just jump into another surgery because it's a hardcore surgery. Right. They take like the right half of your small intestine. Mm -hmm. And of course, they would take lymph nodes. And I'm like, I don't think I'm prepared mentally for that. Right. So, yeah. But was it benign, the tumor? And benign no. means for our fans, we're not educated. We're low function. Right. Um, benign means that it's it it is um, self contained and it's not as opposed to malignant, which means it's spreading to the rest of your body. Malignant is the bad one. Malignant is bad. Benign is good. That's right. Benign, okay. but it was cancerous. <laughs> so, okay, it was cancerous, but was it benign? Uh, no, it was already spreading within the appendix, and they don't know if it did end up in the small intestine because when they did the surgery, right. they didn't even know that it was in the appendix. They were 
focusing on the ovary because that's where it looked like it was on the uh, scan. Right. And so when they biopsied me, biopsied me during surgery, right. they biopsy the ovary and that looks good. But the doctor said, you know, your appendix is kind of hanging over the ovary and it's like it looks a little diseased. I'm just going to take throwing that shade. too. Yeah, throwing your appendix was throwing shade at your ovary because so it was jealous of its attention. It was tr- I'm trying to put it in Hollywood terms, yeah. Claudia. We're Hollywood. We're very everybody is sexy on this podcast, and our fans expect it from us. I I expect it as well as a guest. So the appendix was throwing shade at the ovaries. It was because it got jealous of it, the attention. That totally, it was, getting. it was like you're so hot. Yeah. I don't want other anybody else to see you. Right. I don't want any of the organs God. trying to cash in. Yes. So it's like I'm going to cover you. Right. F off. Yes. Well, the doctor was having none of it. The he's doctor like, wasn't having it? Yeah. And he left my other ovary because he's like, that ovary is hot and there's nothing oh, that can cover it. God, you. So the doctor ghosted the one odor, ovary yep. for the other ovary. Yeah. He had my back on that. Oh, my God. Yeah. So he took the appendix. Sounds like he had your front. <laughs> he, he, ovaries are in the front. front. Ovaries in the front. In, up. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. ovum. You know I'm it. I'm familiar with it. I bet you are. Um, so... So you're in a, a kind of like you're waiting. I'm waiting because okay. I I still have some crazy symptoms and don't feel good. Uh, but there's nothing definitive to actually say, well, it's definitely in your small intestine. Right. And the type of scan that they do, it's a spe- specific type of PET scan called a net spot scan, which is specific for neuroendocrine cancer. Yeah. Um, it's eight years worth of radiation in one shot. Oh, my God. <laughs> so since I just had the scan in March, right before my surgery, Jeez. I'm like, yeah, I think. That uh, sounds like Putin. Yeah. So it's been wonderful. Who's behind that much radiation? Yes, yes, yes. I know, right? He's like just having a nuclear war in my lower body. I know. So. Your lower body. Yeah. Wow. Um, so so this all just happened pretty recently. Yeah. And I haven't been feeling well for a very, very well, you look long great. time. Well, thanks. How are you I'm, doing? How are you pulling it off? I don't. A lot of like. Because a lot of our fans makeup, don't look good and they don't feel good. And, and they, we want to try to help them. Or they feel good and they look like shit. Yeah. And it's like, I'd rather feel good. Well, I'd want to look good too. Who am I kidding? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I mean, this is the almost, sexy podcast. Yeah. I'm making you drool over sexy. There, I see? almost spit all over myself. <laughs> I almost spit all over myself. <laughs> all that talk of um, small intestines and mm. and ovaries. It's like, yeah. I mean, how much can our fans take? And Keep your nodes. pants on, yeah. guys. <laughs> Stop massaging your lymph nodes. Are you? Do, do they rec- Are they recommending chemo? No. Uh, I mean, it depends on what happens when I have the other scan. If right. it's in there and it's in the lymph nodes, then they'll discuss what the treatment is. But aren't you letting time go by? Isn't time of, of the essence? Well, so I thought somebody important said that it, once. It, with certain cancers, yes. And I mean, it's kind of iffy, but it's a, it was a low grade. So it was uh, grade one. So right. it was slow growing. But because it doesn't has know been its there, letters yet, it's it, grade one. It thinks it's like doing numbers and not right. letters, but no shapes, though. Yeah, no, knows the shape of your small it, intestine. It barely a had a shape. It was so small. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it got right to your ovaries. It did. It must I'm be a male disease. in there. Totally perverted. Trying to get all the way up there and so trying to get perv. you pregnant. You know it. Damn it. Well, that can't happen. These but diseases. That's another story. <laughs> Anything is possible. That is true. Anything is possible. Yeah. I guess I'd need a uterus, though. I'm convinced I have an enlarged prostate. <laughs> and an enlarged prostate can also double as a fake uterus. There you go. And this is not a medical podcast, but you can take medical facts from this podcast. And follow everything we say. Follow everything we say. To the letter. To the letter of the law. Even though we don't know, know our letters yet, right? Well, it's a grade one <laughs> yeah. disease. If it's a grade one disease, right. you're focused on shapes, you're focused on colors. You haven't gotten to the vowels yeah. yet and vowel sounds. That's right. But it was at least a stage two. But they don't know if it's a further stage because they didn't get any lymph nodes. Mm. That's the fun. Wow. That's the fun of it. It sounds kind of show busy, show businessy. It like does. stage one. Is it stage two? It's like where yeah. is this stage dis- left? Stage right yeah. cancer. Is where it is stage- this disease performing? Is it backstage like, cancer? Where can I buy tickets <laughs> for the this disease? And it's like it's so elusive because it's drawing such big numbers right now. And that's when you get the crowd because they're like, everybody wants what they can't have. <sighs> they're like, I want that stage cancer. Oh my so God. yeah. 
That's Maybe it. Maybe it'll be on TikTok so <laughs> we can all dance. You know it. it. So you've wrote this book in response. Is that is this a response? Mm, well, I'm doing this podcast into re- a response to my childhood. Well, my whole life is in response to yeah. my childhood. Yes. So that would have to be a whole nother interview. But uh, that book, I actually started before all of this. But then I was actually taking care of my friend's mom who had cancer. And then it kind of like took a lot of my time. Did you catch it? From her. I wonder. She had ovarian cancer. Damn it! God, these women just spread their ovarian cancer yeah. all over the region. And it's like it needs to stop. Well, and I don't know if Jim is part of it. He has ovarian cancer. Oh, now, he he grew an ovary just so he could cash in and copy us. Jim wants to be part of it. I know. Well, you know how women's cycles match up? Well, no, now but you, our but ovarian cancers. Me. Yeah. Yes. So we're doing all that, too. Stay away from Shannon and Natalie. <laughs> Sorry, they ladies. Are in <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Natalie, are we boring you with our talk of um, diseases to prevent women and feminisms? We're behind the bulletproof glass. So yes. Lucky. Okay. I'm, I'm radiating. I'm radiating. <laughs> Thank God you guys are safe behind the glass. They are for now. Um, all right. So you started this book and this threw you into high gear. It did. This health scare. Uh, yeah. What about the artery? Is the artery at least okay? The artery healed, but it's. Uh, I just have to be careful all the time because apparently I have a uh, connective tissue disease. So... I, Is there any disease you don't have? I'm not sure, Claudia? but one of my doctors thought she was going to write a, um, like a, what are they? You said she. Women can be doctors, everybody. She's one of the few that I actually like that's female. Uh, I thought you were going to say <laughs> Should I one, admit that? She's one of the good ones? <laughs> she's a good one. Wow. I don't know I if know. we can say that. And hopefully we don't use that in a clip that's out of context. I, I know people might start going to female doctors and then <sighs> all shit's going to break loose. So I mean, once they become doctors, the next thing you know, they could be in space. Oh, my God. And they could be astronauts. Pilots. You know, yeah, they're let's, gonna, well, let's. They're gonna think they could manage stores. Oh I mean, it's God. gonna be crazy. Lawyers, yes, yeah. So uh... I object. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we move fast on this podcast. Yeah, too but... fast, too fast. Man. Well, we have to keep ahead of these diseases. Mm-hmm. We do. And the artery was okay, so you can't eat. Um, you're Italian like me. Yeah, and we love <clears throat> the linguine and clams. Love Is it. Is that a good thing to like combat some of this? I stuff, don't know, like but I eat it. Try to flush it out with garlic, maybe? I, I eat so much garlic, so much onion. Hopefully, is that because hopefully you're, you can't tell. Is that because you're Italian or a vampire? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. I think it's a little of both, actually. <laughs> <laughs> do you sometimes do you pretend that you're a sexy vampire? Because I do. I just pretend I'm sexy. Yes. And it doesn't always work, yes. but I keep pretending. But you have the glasses on. It's like, I can I also do. read, hello. Hi, I'm smart because I can't see. Yeah. yeah, right? You're smart. You have the glasses on, but it's also to cover the fact that you're also hot. Oh, okay. Thanks. It's also yeah. to cover the lines and the uh, dark circles, but and also to see. I keep forgetting. It's also yeah. to see. Yeah, and also <laughs> because, it, but the lines and the dark circles are because of a fentanyl. That and being Italian, because yeah. when you're Italian and you do fentanyl, it really accentuates the dark circles because right. you get tired, you know, mm-hmm. and you already have that, you know, sallow skin. So Sallow? Sallow. Sallow is a word our fans are unfamiliar with. Oh, so I- could you please explain it? I don't know what it means. I just heard somebody say it. Now, I have olive skin and it's like drab. Is so. sallow, that's what sallow means? Sallow, I don't Part know, what does it say? Part of a person's say? complexion, yeah. an unhealthy yellow, yellow or pale, pale brown color. I sounds think you were like, looking for jaundice. Oh, I, yeah, I was going to say that sounds like one of the stools I saw in the park that somebody left on the ground. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say um, jaundice is my black friend's name. Oh, I, the jaundice. Jaundice, J- jaundice Jenkins. Jaundice Jenkins, I like it. Yeah. Has a ring to it. Fastest runner at Pine Grove Elementary School. There you go. Not that black people can't do other things. They can also do a bunch of other things. I'm just saying he happened to win the 50-yard dash, which was part of field day. That's I won Pine that Grove too, Elementary actually. School. Did you really? I you were very 50, fast? I, I, I was so not athletic because my mom but didn't have But you were very a, fast? But on field day, I was kicking ass. I came in first for 50-yard dash. <sighs> Maybe we should change this book to Outrunning Cancer. <laughs> 50-yard dash from cancer. Yeah. And we can be lighthearted about this. And can, for those of you guys, oh, you're joking about a disease? Yes, we have to. We have to. There has to be a lighter side to this and will elevate us because our white blood cells yeah. will then mobilize and attack That's the diseased true. ones. And we want to be able to make fun yeah. of people too. And, and is that part of white that. supremacy? Your white blood cells rising up against the dirty ethnic... <laughs> um, 
<laughs> cells that are trying to contaminate your body. What do you think? I, we'll use it as a clip and ruin all of our careers. Well, the red blood cells. So is that like an Indian thing? Like I'm confused because if it's white natives. blood cells, we'd call them. Oh, natives that's now. right. See, I'm politically incorrect. Yes. I don't know what to say anymore. Yeah. I'm so. Oh. This is bad, but my white blood cell count is actually below normal right now. So does right. that mean I'm not racist? <laughs> I'm no, you need more white blood cells. But yes, yeah. you, you make sure that they uh, okay. don't have a tiki torch or anything. Yeah, like yeah, we don't want because that Because that's out. racism. It is. All right, guys, we want to take a second to talk about our friends over at rockauto.com. Ever have a friend that has a guy? Nobody can find something, but your friend has a guy? Well, I've got your guy for auto parts, and it's rockauto.com. They've been in business for 20 years, and while every other business in this country might be raising prices or low on stock, when it comes to auto parts, you've got a guy. I'm telling you, rockauto.com has the auto parts you need in stock at reliably low prices. If you've got a used car, it's probably appreciated in value. The car market is hot, which is why now's the time to keep your car well-maintained. It feels good knowing you're driving a reliable car, and rockauto.com makes it easy with every part you need at low prices. So go check out rockauto.com. If you're looking for auto parts, Rock Auto is your guy. And let them know we sent you. At checkout, yell at them. And I know about this from Mike Vecchione Investigates. Just kidding, guys. There's a box to put in our show name. Once more, that's rockauto.com with all the auto parts you need at amazing prices. All right, guys, let's get back into it. I think we've got off on a tangent, but it's very interesting. I'm glad you're looking well. Thank you're you. You're feeling so-so? Yeah, you know, I do what I can. Yeah. I, I just keep I laughing. Think, I never think Italians, uh, I think you're from the school where I grew up to, where it was like, it's never, it's like, eh. I'm yeah. all right. You know, yeah. it's never like, I yeah. feel great. You're not one of these morning people like, I'm ready to go. I feel great. I'm trying to become that through affirmations. But the way I was, I was like, ah, I'm doing all right. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Well, do you, you know? feel that? Because I feel like Italians and Jews are very similar with like being made to feel guilty. So it's almost like I feel guilty if I tell people I feel Is this good. from Kanye's blog? <laughs> I just don't know where you're going with when you threw Jews in there. None of us are Jewish here. And I feel like that you're reading from the book of Kanye. But I've been mistaken for a Jew. Okay. Because, Have you? Because I'm not athletic. But in right. my joke writing is superb. So right. obviously people think I'm Jewish. Right. No. Yes, I have been mis mistaken for a Jew. But I what feel about like Hispanic? there's... That too, yeah. yes, yeah, but Italians more are... people think from Spain more so than like Latin America. That's what I've gotten, before, okay. Which Spanish I don't... from Spain, yeah. Even yeah. though I have a big nose, so that doesn't add up to me. But mm. eh, what are you going to do? I'll take it. I don't know. Fight a bull. I guess. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess you're going to have. I have a bolero jacket, so I oh. can do that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your arteries are good now. Thank you. The cancer is... Stop in, hitting on my arteries. In remission. The yeah. arteries is blood flow to your heart. That That's is true. That's the fastest way to the heart. It's not through the stomach, <laughs> like women always say. The Although I think you have arteries. Do you have arteries going everywhere, right? To Hardened. your stomach, don't you? Hardened. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when a heart artery, uh, artery is aroused Yeah, Yeah, sexually. that's right. It's a turned on artery. And for those of you guys not getting this, I'm sorry that you're not getting our hardened artery aroused humor that we're doing for you, okay? It's also journalism, but we're also trying to entertain you because you're at home, probably in a pile of your own filth <laughs> right now, trying to figure out how to get out of your own situation. You're in debt. You never went to college. You don't know your father. And you know what? I'm tired of talking to you low-income whites like this. Rise up. Get a shower, a cold one. Put your teeth start, in. Put your teeth in and get on with your day. I'm trying to motivate you. And Shannon yells at me for being derogatory. It's called Tough Love. It's called Coaching Through an Investigatory Podcast. I'm and down Thank with you it. for assisting me in this. I, I agree with you. Now, what's with the shirt? Sex Pistol. I know they're a band, but is that to send a message? It is. Is it to send a message to men out there? It's, well, not only is it to send a message that, look, I don't have tits. But it's also because I use I stole their font for the cover of my books. Okay, so, and I love the Sex Pistols, but yeah, I, that's a good shirt. I don't have tits, but I have tumors. You know it. See, my tits look like tumors. <laughs> look at my tumors. Everybody. Yeah, and then people would they're be malignant. Like, what? <laughs> that means you can't stop touching them. That's Once you start right. touching them, you can't stop exactly. touching them. Exactly. Oh my god! I mean, I won't gonna... feel it though because this is really padding, so okay. I wouldn't even feel it if somebody was massaging them. So. Wow. There's that too. It's a good way to get ahead in Hollywood. Yeah. Listen. You know, I wouldn't even feel it. Yeah. 
<laughs> makes, yeah. makes are it you less even, painful. Are you even molesting me? I don't even feel it. I can't even sue you because yeah. I don't feel it. Right. And so. you'd have to testify to that. That's right. Under, Harvey Weinstein. A, yeah. Under a, um, a Hollywood court exactly. of law. Which really probably doesn't exist. Yes, it, does, it exists on the sets of movies and stuff. Yeah, like when know? we watch it in fake time, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then when they're finally caught in real life. She just did air quotes air for those quotes, of you who can't afford a computer. You know, when they're finally caught, it's like they're 87 years old. So right. what does it matter? <laughs> but still sexy. So sad. I mean, 87. Harvey Weinstein's yeah. so hot. He is pretty hot. Oh my god! People so never give him credit for that. that they ass. always go, "His acts are gross," and I agree. Yeah, his acts are disgusting. Yeah, but physically gorgeous, pretty hot, pretty hot. Would and love to see him in his open robe, totally <sighs> with a potted plant. Do you think next he has an open robe policy? I think him and Charlie Rose do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. God, Charlie Rose was a good talk show host. I forget what I he know. did. What did he do? He opened his robe to someone. Oh my God, open robe. <laughs> yeah. Opening the robe. I think that sounds like an expression. And who? What woman wouldn't fall for that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's such a like ace move to do. It's really balls out. It is literally because his balls were out. So thank you, Claudia, for saying that. <laughs> I love. We're it. meshing really well. We have really I good feel chemistry. We had good. Do you think Jim is intimidated we... by what's happening here? No, Jim is so witty and funny. Like. I, I, Jim has his sunglasses up, and I'm choosing to keep my sunglasses down. So we have different policies of for, for sunglasses. Yeah, and you have like the state trooper glasses. Like you always say, you look like a cop and all that. But they're working on you. He has the sunglasses on the hat, which on most people it says, "Hey, I'm a douchebag." But for some reason, he just looks. Jim like, pulls it off. Yeah, he pulls it off. Jim does pull it off. <laughs> he pulls it off. That's right. <clears throat> Um, well, we have to get to some, uh, it's 25 minutes in. Our fans love to hear about the guests and their background. And you have a specific background that's blowing everybody's mind. Okay, really? because, yeah, because you're an, uh, you're an um, underdog, and we're underdogs in this podcast. We're in the big studio today, but usually they put us in the small studio on our way to a closet. But we are emerging, and we're an underdog. You're an underdog, and you're overcoming all of your adversities. Thank you. And you're achieving Great things. You wrote a book. Thanks. Our fans have never read a book. No, so they don't even know what it is, but I hope to they don't know encourage them written... to figure it out. Yes. Yeah. So we're inspiring. Yeah. And that was the inspirational part. Now we have to get some, to some investigations. Let's do we... it. Let's do plugs first, Shannon. I'm going to pull an audible here. And um, I usually forget about plugs until the end of the podcast. But um, this book is staring me down. And let's do some plugs. All right. I am uh, MikeFecchio.com for dates. I have some coming up. Uh, Comedy Works in November 11th through the 13th, right before my big birthday that's coming up. So if you're in the Denver area, November 11th through the 13th, uh, before that, right before that, November 10th, I'm at Magoobie's Joke House for a cancer benefit, Claudia. So if you're in Baltimore or Denver, I am coming to your town. Please come out and see me. You need to see about me. Um, at Comic Mike V on all social media platforms. I'm putting a lot out on social media right now. You guys, your heads are going to turn around 360 in like in that movie, which is also part of Halloween. And um, at Comic Mike V, um, Instagram, Twitter, I'm on TikTok. And uh, dates, special. A lot of you are asking about the special. Um, we're trying to find a platform for it right now. Um, but hopefully we will find one soon and I will let everybody know what platform it's on when I know. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the five star ratings and reviews. All the correspondence matters. Um, so thank you for your comments and thank you for coming to the YouTube premiere every Monday at 9 p.m. And I appreciate you guys. Claudia, what do you got? I have my book, 100 Things to Hate Before You Die. It is coming out November 22nd, available on Amazon, ClaudiaComedy.com, or wherever books are sold, but mostly Amazon is the place to go. Because okay. you, you want to get that rating up. You want yes. people to say, wow, what's what's with this book that yeah. everybody's buying? Uh, it's, it's a book of rants. I fucking hate everyone. I okay. hate everything. Right. And uh, I think you do too. Yes. You know, well, you're right there with our fans. Justifiably, yeah. right? All our meth fans and fentanyl users. But uh, no, it's fun stuff. It's, uh, I don't get into like anything political. Right. You know, I mean, make little references here yeah. and there. 
take wink, shots. Wink. Yeah, I take some pot shots in yeah. there. But, you know, I mean, I hate Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle. Who doesn't oh hate that? You know what I mean? I actually love that. You want your room you to like see- the scent? Well, you want it to smell like vagina. And I didn't know that vagina should have a smell. So this was news to me. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess hers smells like lilac. It's a Hollywood vagina. I mean, if it and if it's waxy, there's something wrong with that too. If she's a waxy vagina, so a, if, women don't have waxy vaginas. I, I don't know. I never touched anyone I else's. Just yeah. Think it's amazing. And I think I, the the vagina is amazing because it's a place. Isn't so that it? means you can get directions. And to it's it. very pliable. You know, it's, pliable. <laughs> well, let's talk about the elasticity of it. Well, let's because it can stretch. It can, and it can. Go back. It can go back. Supposedly. Yeah. And you want it to go back. You don't want to keep it stretched. You do. But if you have problems, there's labiaplasty, you know, because most women, they want to look like the coin slot. Yeah. Some look like a coin slot with two dimes and a nickel stuck in it. So they want to tuck that back in. They want to do a tuck. They want to do a tuck. A lift, nip and tuck, right? A lift on the vagina. Yeah. But she's wrong because her vagina candle is like seventy something dollars, right. and I think it should be sixty nine dollars. I think sixty nine. Oh sense? my god, that's so boss! That's, uh, I love that. Yeah, that would be an emblematic. Um, what's it called? A reflective of the sex position. Yeah. Sixty nine. Yeah. And she didn't do that. She no, chose she to make it seventy five. So rude. And it's greedy for six dollars. You could be really making a statement. I think with so. With your and, candle. Yeah, she's all about female empowerment yeah. and all that. Why not right. give a nod to the sixty nine? Yes. Give so, a nod to it. I know. Not many people are giving a nod a to nod things like now. That, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. But, you know, there's so many things to hate. And, okay. and I cover a lot of them okay. in here. You know, we all hate the shorts all year long guy. Don't you hate that guy? He, yeah, because he's like they're trying to will the weather to go back into yeah. summer. And it's and, not going to happen. Right. And they're trying to show off their calf implant tattoo. You know, they just like they cannot stomach putting pants on because nobody's going to see their calf don't tattoo. Don't tread on me. Yeah. Don't tread on me. Yeah. Proud to be whatever. Yes. Yeah. It, we actually saw a guy when we were walking over and he had... You know, he was jacked and he's like, he can't close his arms, that kind of. Was it me? I, I thought it was you, but he was a little shorter. Right. So, um, God, I hate short people. They I know. suck. Me too, because so I am one. And dumb. <laughs> yeah, there's a song now, we're, about we're it. Tall. We're tall. Oh, that's right. I have We're tall and on. sexy. We're models. So sexy. And um, yeah, he had a uh, tattoo on his calf of a waving like American flag. Yeah. So I was like, he's. And you hate America? You don't like America? Um, America I didn't kinda... say. Yeah. Like, I might have to take this my guy's rights side my freedoms? on no. you. Yeah, no. He was... I might have to take this guy's side. The American flag sounds like a great thing to have on your cat. <laughs> on your cat. So sexy, obviously. is That's what I was getting at. Right. But, you know, you wanted to turn it in a different direction. Yeah. What am I going to do? I had to play along. But I was thinking, I want to wave the flag with this guy. He, yeah. He was hot. Yes. Not really. But not really hot. No, you don't close. like a guy with who's muscle bound. I don't like. Yeah, he, if you can't close your arms, that's no, that's not God, hot. You must hate me. I and I am so well. Your arms muscle are bound. like touching, though. I mean, but my, I'm, it's understated. Yeah, but it's really <laughs> present, and it's like the fans tune in for it, and I feel like they want it, and I've almost had to stop lifting weights so much per week because it's like getting to. Um, you know, yeah, you're almost like starting to have definition. Like you're almost having a neck now. Like you stopped working out enough that we see you have a neck, right? Yeah. And yeah. women don't like a neck or they do like a neck? I think they like a neck. Although some like the guys, the, you know. The, the <laughs> yeah, Shannon. Yeah, Shannon's headbutting the glass yeah, right now. Yeah, she's like, oh, yeah. Trying to get yeah. I'm, I'm happy when there's no neck. No neck. Oh, okay. Yeah. And a guy who fights with his hands for valor. Oh, not right. For nonsense. Yes, that's very manly. And it's manly. Not, not having feelings is manly, too. Well, I think you're being sarcastic there. <laughs> kind of. We tweet our feelings I, on the show. No, I'm never sarcastic. You are always I'm sarcastic. I'm all biz. And I'm that's all why biz. we love you. <laughs> so the book on Amazon, November? Yeah, November 22nd, uh, okay. Amazon, or you can go to ClaudiaComedy.com. And uh, you can catch me weekday mornings also on Monsters of Rock on oh, Dash Radio. So You're close. a rock guy, right? I love rock. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. Yeah, so I'm doing that while I can't do stand-up because I'm not ready to get back out there. I have no fucking energy. Who is? I know, I know. Yeah. So, But um, yeah, that's the Monsters of Rock thing is great. You seem to be a little bit of a quiet riot. Yeah. 
I, well, I'm trying to take care of my mental health. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> Metal health instead of mental health. That's a play on words. And a lot of the kids who watch this are yeah. too young to understand what we're doing. They don't know about. that it'll drive you mad. Drive you mad. Yep. These are names of songs from Quiet Riot, who was a band. <laughs> God, you guys don't get it at yeah. all. We actually have the bassist from Quiet Riot, Rudy Sarzo. Rudy Sarzo is great. He's awesome. He was also in White Snake. He's uh, one of the DJs on my Where'd you meet Rock. him in the Stole of the Night? <laughs> Just keep coming on this podcast, and literally, sexually. Yeah, we come on, we, feel the noise over yes. here. Yes. We're lighting it up right now with rock. These That's are rock right. anthems. Light up the sky. Um, Shannon, what do you got? You can follow me on Instagram at ShannonLee6982. Listen to my podcast, The Thing Is Ding. We talk about bad dates, fighting, and ghosts. And I know when this episode airs, Halloween will be over, but all of the of the fall is like pretty spooky. So please go and listen on YouTube to our ghost hunting episode with Brian Six and Ryan Shaner. Wherever you listen to Mike Vecchio and Investigates, you can also watch that live for free every single Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern at gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live. That's absolutely for free. The best way to support the show is to go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use promo code MVI. That will give you a one-week free trial, which gives you access to every single episode of this show that we've ever done, as well as every episode of every show on all of Gas Digital Network, all for free for one week. If you listen on iTunes or YouTube, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend. Every little bit of interaction helps the show to grow. And if you have questions, comments, or your own video investigation to submit, send it into Mike Vecchio, Mike Vecchio Investigates at gmail.com. Uh, pod, and go to podcastmarch.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs. That's it. And let me tell you guys something about this podcast. We're underrated. We're one of the most underrated podcasts. We're emerging. We're rising. And when we do, it's going to be the biggest It's going to be the biggest um, underdog story coming to fruition since the movie Rocky. We're coming. We're coming, and we're going to do huge numbers, and I'm affirming it right now, and it's going to happen. We've been in the underbelly so long, but with your help, we are going to come out of this, and we are going to be all in our glory, and the, and the people on the ground floor, you guys listening right now, we're a part of it first, and we will acknowledge you, and we will put you in the aristocracy of Mike Vecchio and Investigates, and when everybody else, they'll be peasants, but they will be welcome, and we will give them bread and circus, but... The people on board now will be royalty. So, thank you. And to the other people, sorry not sorry, which is something people were saying 10 years ago. <laughs> okay, let's get to some news stories, Shannon. And, you know, I agree, Shannon, the fall is still pretty spooky. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Amanda Knox, ex bull Bo Rafael Solicitito. Solicito? Right. Raphael Solicito reunite. Amanda Knox, Expo, Raphael Solicito reunite to go on a date they had planned before the roommate murder rap. Are you familiar with Amanda Knox? Yes. She is the sexy, she was a sexy young woman who went to Italy for college studies. And then she started dating Raphael Solicito. And then they were having threesomes or something was very dirty and provocative there. And then one of the girls that was in the housing complex got killed. They blamed her. She did some prison time. She eventually got acquitted and came back to the United States. Even and then hotter. Went, even hotter. Right. Now she's going on a follow-up date because this guy, they, this guy I have a lot of respect for, actually, Raphael, because he was dating her and they tried to flip him and they were like, we'll give you a redu we'll give you immunity if you just flip on her. And he was like, no. Yeah. She didn't do it. I know. He so was he, hardcore. He was hardcore and he risked going to prison for the rest of his life for her, who yeah. he slept with a couple times, which means she must have been really good in bed. Well, she was either really good in bed or he wanted to go to prison because he wanted man ass and that was the only way that's another do, way to look at right? it i mean i was going to build Raphael up as a hero and you've got him as a low-level sodomite yeah <laughs> interesting take on this claudia i listen i had to take it in another direction yes, but i that's what he was saying yeah <laughs> i do uh, feel though that he was very very loyal to her very loyal and like you said what is that like magical down there like what's going on i like don't he know was so devoted to it yeah hopefully not knowing devoted. that he would ever get it again right right and now it seems like he's paid it's paid off because yep. she is gonna sleep with him again because he takes her on a date and then they go home and he's like i almost took a murder rap for you and you're not gonna sleep with me right. after all of these years first of all we already slept together a bunch of times it's not gonna rack up as yeah. another name on your notch you know you don't have to count it and uh, how about a little uh, 
solitary confinement in uh, the hoo-ha. I think so. I agree. Right? Yeah. And does he not know that, you know, women age and it's probably not the way it was before. So. Right. But she didn't. Does she have kids? Yeah, she, didn't, she does. Oh. And she's also taking this trip with her husband. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, she's married? She's married, she's married yeah. now and going yeah. on a date? Well, it's not really a date. <laughs> Polyamory? It's, you know, it's listed. It's, it's said in this article that it's a reunion between the two of them because this exact place where they're looking to go in Italy, which is... Uh, she's uh, going back to Italy? Yeah, it's it's the Umbrian... I would never go to Italy again if I almost did life in prison Oh, in my God. I would stay very far away. Oh, my away. God. You can get meatballs over here. Oh, my God. Totally. You don't yeah. need to go over there. You can get frozen meatballs, even though they're disgusting. They are disgusting. I Claudia. only make... I only eat my own. I make my own meatballs. That's it. God, you yeah. had me at you eat your own. <laughs> <laughs> so they were... They were going to the Umbrian town of Gubbio, G-U-B-B-I-O, Gubbio, yeah. Gubbio. And Sounds like it clogs your arteries. <laughs> it sure does. Sorry about that, Claudia. That's okay. Sensitive. Mine wasn't clogged, so it's okay. Okay, what it, was wrong with it? Uh, just weakened it. from the disease, connective tissue disease. Connective tissue. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So they were supposed to go there in 2007, and on the exact day they were supposed to go to this place is when they the body was found. Oh, my God. They were also both convicted of this crime. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel like no that. one really talks about him. They really only talked about her being wrongfully Because she, um, she, she got all the media attention. Mm-hmm. This poor guy <laughs> got no media attention and got the, like, prison time we don't even know what he looks like. is he hot no he's pretty sexy too okay that makes i don't sense. know what he looks like now but he was good looking back oh. then this is them now. oh they're both like f- really fair like she's like whole foods hot yes she's not like god regular that's hot. such a great, good way to put it <laughs> you know she's I mean? whole foods hot yeah <laughs> and he doesn't look italian he looks northern italian he looks swiss I was, basically oh my god i was just gonna say that god. too and that denim that's probably shirt. why there was the cops didn't believe him there was a lot of holes in his story yeah and in his shirt Right on the pocket. But is she She's hotter? married though. Is she hotter than Casey Anthony? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Casey Anthony. No, but she does have a Whole Foods um art teacher vibe to her. That's I like right. that. I yeah. like that. And uh I wish kind of like he looked more like a swarthy. I know. Italian. Like I thought he would have like kind of like greasy yeah, wavy yeah. hair. There's sort there's of something like something hot about like a swarthier Italian yeah. impregnating a uh whiter like yes like a very pristine generic angel- yeah yes, generic little house angelic. on the prairie there's something dirtier and more I sinister know, about that i know i mean our fans are aroused <laughs> i mean they're finally out of bed yeah and they're aroused now so they've reunited shannon what now why is she gonna go with her husband yeah is at first- least he dating somebody Raphael? i don't know but can i show you i feel like he's he's improved a lot over the years this is what he used to look like Oh. oh my God! He looks now. like her. He's a nerd. <laughs> he looks like a Whole Food wo- Whole Foods wow. woman. <laughs> this is like the movie Face Off, but over a lot of period yeah. of years, he became her. He did. It's or single white female. Yes. Yeah. Single white female. So creepy. Wow. So he got better looking. Yes. And they've decided to go on this trip together. Is somebody selling a book or something? Is that why this is publicized? Doesn't it appear? I don't know why this is being publicized. Oh, I love they. Uh, they did a, an interview with an Italian magazine, mm. but uh, yeah, I don't know why this is happening. All of a sudden, maybe the 15 year anniversary. Mm. It seems like something you might want to forget. But these guys are celebrating it, and I would not go back to Italy anymore. But these people feel safe, I guess. Amanda Knox and Raphael Salicito. Crazy. Yeah, but he's a solid guy for doing that. Totally. I mean, he, I mean he's he faced, lo- loyal. You got to give him that. Da- no, he faced down life in prison mm-hmm. because of the right thing to do. Yeah. And she already broke up with him. But we think and, she's guilty, right? Don't we think she's No, I think she's not guilty. She didn't really? do it. Really? Oh, you mm-hmm. don't th- Oh, that's right. Yeah, we don't think she's guilty. I don't think she's this guilty. This is the guy who they actually did it. Yeah. Oh, that's I remember he, Because he has a history, like he has a um what do you, like a criminal background. And then he went into the right. bathroom I and remember, left, yeah. Left it there, and that you could just take the DNA, the, whatever you could do. You could take the DNA and figure it out. Yeah. But they didn't do that. The cop was out to get her and make of big course. headlines. That's right. That's God, right. Why are the cops always doing that? I don't know. Why do they always pick on these innocent white girls? You know, <sighs> it's always the white girls that get and it who are sexy. Obviously, yes. This smoke break is brought to you by YoDelta.com. The official getting high sponsor of the Gas Digital Network. Hi. 
harassed. And having sex with multiple people in the housing unit. Mm-hmm. Was she having sex with multiple people in the housing unit? Wasn't there something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think she was. I don't know if that's part of the story. It's, yeah, that's I don't. part of our story. <laughs> it's our narrative. It's how our narrative is going to tell. <laughs> but yeah. I, I seem to remember there was like there was like a threesome. Threesome. That's going what it got on. my attention in the article. Well, it, did, it does say that um, a four way that there was a, a sexual incident gone wrong when when talking about this couple, but then also the other guy who was convicted said it was also during a sexual incident. So it seems that unless they're all lying about it. Can a sexual incident go wrong? I think not it's all that pretty right. Of. Yeah, it's, <laughs> right? I mean, and if, I mean, come if on. they're not awake to complain, how could they be wrong? Oh my God, Claudia, you, know what I you mean? took it to the sleep. <laughs> you took it to the REM sleep. Um, okay, well, Amanda Knox and Rafael Salicito, good luck to you on your reunion, and I hope nothing happens this time. Right. Wouldn't it be something if something happened again? Yeah, how weird how weird would it be if we're in a sexual tryst and someone doesn't make it out alive right. air quotes in our thruple yeah yeah thruple's a word that we're using now yeah well, i'm lot. using it and what the hell God, i'm gonna use it too yes you should what are some of the comments shannon on that and claudia just winked at me and I don't know if Jim was cool with it. No, I guess I'll I was find actually out winking afterwards. at Jim. <laughs> Were you winking at Jim? I wasn't winking at the screen. <laughs> okay. You know, I was winking at Jim because he's been approached, but that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> he's been approached on a four-way? No, I'm just kidding. Because a three-way is too routine now. No, a four-way no, no, is something no. that would catch our attention. No, no, no. And someone maybe... we know, though. Someone we know. He had a four-way with somebody you no, know. No, someone we know was approached for a thruple, but we don't know anything more about it. Because that was the oh, first God. time I ever heard of thruple. Well, a thruple is something that happens every day at Skankfest, so it's like not new to us here. At the and that's all oh, right. That's where all the fentanyl a was. Yeah, that you were talking about. Yeah, I like a quadruple. That if something happens to one of the people, then you still have three people. Yeah, to have sex that's with. a good point. I mean, what is it important. if there's wait? What if there's like eight people? Is that a? That's an orgy. <laughs> that's a Friday. That's, that's that's a happy hour. That's a Friday night yeah. at the gas digital bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, seriously, don't use the bathrooms here. Um, let's get some comments on the show. I've been meaning to do this for so long, I keep forgetting it. People are commenting about these stories, and I'm just like, I'm so anxious to hear what they have to say, because people are really smart. I I don't know how, there's nothing great here. Yeah, um, that's the point. <laughs> but, but, like nothing worth, but like nothing worth even dissecting, I feel like, but... um. Let's see. I'll just read you the first one. What are people saying? (laughs) This is from Aiden H. Knox can do whatever she wants. I don't see the appeal of this, but she owes nothing to no one. Aiden H. is saying that? (laughs) She don't owe nothing to no one. She don't owe nothing to no one. Oh, my God. Sounds like something my kid brother might say. (laughs) She don't owe nothing to no one. She could do whatever she like. She should live her life to the fullest, knowing how quickly it can be taken away, whether by murder or imprisonment. And then somebody responds to that, Dave Undefined, and says she's milking her name for fame to every ounce of the drop. Can't you see that by now? Oh, she's milking it. She, he was trying Is to she make milking a it if she's almost incarcerated? She I lost two know. years of her life. Shannon, stop defending a hot, <laughs> beautiful um, exchange student. Uh, uh, somebody who's so on the up and up. Like, we yeah. can't. But is she milking it for publicity now? This story suddenly comes out, Shannon? Well, it's funny that you say that. Because funny next... how? Funny peculiar or ha ha funny? <laughs> Am I a clown? <laughs> and we read you the next comment from Susan. Well, Susan. let me say something about milking it for our <laughs> lactose intolerant fans. We're sorry. We'll try to cut out this part of the episode, but we should leave it in because speech is more important than your weird disorder. Yeah, and you could have oat milk and milk. Yeah, it. have oat milk for once. <laughs> Oats can be milked apparently now too. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Shannon. I'm sorry. I, that comment got me stirred up. <laughs> so the next one is from Susan Susan. Oh, double Susan? <laughs> yes. Susan squared. She says, tacky for Knox and her ex-boyfriend to call in the pop rock paparazzi to document this it's exploiting meredith's death for publicity and most likely money is in there too well money how are they going to make money are they going to they should do an only fans i feel they should and i think that they shouldn't name the victim i think they're giving her too much attention when it's really all about amanda yeah she's the one that and deserves, her sexuality <laughs> right she's the one that deserves her, all the attention her cutthroat stabbing sexuality yeah with her mom haircut <sighs> And her sensible shoes. Such a sexy. So mom. sexy. She looks like she eats yogurt. Yeah, she buys her clothes in Whole Foods, remember? Yes. Yep. 
We don't like that. I mean, we like that. We like that. We do like yeah, it. Yeah, it's so hot. And our fans love it when we talk in sexy voices. Oh my God, it's so hot. A whisper. Shannon, what else? What else do people have to say about it? We have two people knocking knocks. Yeah, in response to that one from Susan Susan, uh, Joseph Kurt says, "Oh, please, the Italian government is at fault, not the innocently wrongly uh, innocent wrongly accused and jailed." True. Disgrace. The Italian government yeah. was at fault for that. The Italian government overstepped, which is hard for Italians to do because we're so short. <laughs> The Italian government overstepped there, and they're lucky it wasn't ancient Rome, because Amanda would have been in the Colosseum and been attacked by a tiger, because they did that back in the day, and I was there, and I was in Rome. And I dare you to challenge me if you fans are sitting there going, Mike, you don't know what it's like. You've never been to Rome. I was just there. I was just there. So I know what I'm talking about. And did I have a sexual tryst with um, a bunch of other people? And did I get put into prison? <laughs> and no, I didn't. I managed to avoid that by going to sleep and going on tours to the Vatican and to the Colosseum and to the Pantheon and also a food tour, which was booked by Katie Hannigan. And she would not let me have sexual trysts with exchange <laughs> students there or the person who would have ended up dead might have been me because Katie Hannigan has a history of poisoning. I'll just say it like that. <laughs> what about regular students? She said you can't have sex with exchange students. But a regular but what about Italian student? Native, native I students. I tried that and that's still a big no. So she put the kibosh on that too. The kibosh. Can you kibosh is, in Italy? I think that's true. I don't know. Yeah, that might not work there. I don't know. Mm. Shannon, what's the next comment? This, this, this um, commenting on these stories, that people have a lot to offer. It's so rich. The next one is from JB. He said, in a related story, the UK has urged all its students to leave Italy. Oh, because Be the funny. woman who got killed is from England. Oh, I, and I think it's because they, they're joking that these are the murderers and they're back in Italy. Oh, jeez. English are the murderers? No, the Italian. Oh, the, the, the UK has urged their students to leave Italy because in Italy is where these two are going back to. Oh, because they're the killers. Right. Oh, I thought they were saying that all Italians are murderers, but Italians just <laughs> idly sit by and watch while two Americans go over and murder a Yeah, Brit. we usually only kill each other because we're in the mafia. The mafia yeah. kills each other. Of and we don't kill we do. citizens. I mean, they. And we don't we. believe in drugs. The, no, no. No drugs. No drugs. We don't go for that. No, we don't believe in it. No. What's another comment, Shannon? That one was too confusing for our fans. They couldn't follow that line of logic. Uh, let's see. MB said, I don't care what anyone says. This one is deranged. There is something dangerously off about her. And now all of a sudden she wants publicity. Well, go uh, go to it, Missy, and all the results that go along with I it. I don't like the sass of this commenter. Either. Missy? Go to it, Missy. Missy? You ever heard of feminism? Women are going yeah. to colleges now. Women empowerment. And women are in colleges, and there's colleges dedicated to women. And some of them actually take classes. And some of them go to classes. And yeah. not baking other classes. Sewing. Yeah. Yes. Homemaking. Yes. They do it. Child rearing. That's right. God, I love to say the word rearing. Rearing. Is that bad? It's so professional sounding. <sighs> Women are doing big things. So for this comment, I don't know what to tell you. You know, read a newspaper. Mm. Shameful. Go ahead, Shannon. Um, what is it? One more comment, and then we'll move on. Okay. Uh, Char- this Amanda Knox thing has got me. It's fired up. Yeah, you're you're going nuts over it. I love it. Chiaro Scuro said, I lived in Italy at the time and followed the story closely in the Italian papers. I really think they did it. The duo was then exiled. Uh, they quoted something from the article. It says, they were let off on a technicality that the DNA evidence was not correctly recorded or something. Do you think it's symbolic? First of all, I hate to interrupt you, Shannon, but there's something funny here. <laughs> that they got off and got off sexually? <laughs> Is there something sexual that also could be legal? I think so. I think they have an argument there. They have an argument. they got off from getting off, as you said, after yeah. getting off. And I think there's a reason for that, that we have to look at what is the meaning behind that. Yeah. And it means that you can kill people and get away with it. Yes. As long as it was sexual in nature. As long as it's their sexuality. Yeah. There, there has to be the sex component. Yeah. You can get off while getting off. That's right. And it should be a reduced sentence. I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. Or no sentence at all. No. Nope. Is that it, There's a little bit more of that one. Okay. Uh, they were let off on a technicality that the DNA evidence was not correctly recorded or something. 
Rudy Guidi was a scapegoat. At first, she tried to blame it on another black guy who owned a bar in town. I'll never believe they are innocent. And I would just say really quickly that the person responded to it. This one says, I'm glad you're not a police investigator or district attorney in the U.S. Quote, I really think they did it with absolutely no evidence. Yeah, I think they went after them with no evidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they just pulled it out of thin air, Yeah, oh, obviously. Thin air. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Which the air is thinner in Italy. I believe it is, yeah. too. That's why they look good. Yeah. They look really the good people are Italy. thinner. The air is thinner. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I think it was a miscarriage. Did she have if- one? I don't think so. <laughs> she has on birth control, I think. She was a savvy, savvy, like, sexual being over yeah, there. Yeah, she's very women liberated. Can be sexual now. Women can be sexually liberated now. In Italy. In Italy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but when they're running into a, in Italy, it's like you're running into statues of the Virgin Mary every five seconds. It's very confusing. So it's very confusing times yeah. over in Italy. Because was Mary on birth control? How did she end up getting pregnant? And we don't understand any of it. Yeah. So it's sending the wrong message to women. It's sending, it's like a miracle can happen. Yeah. But maybe you don't want the miracle to happen. But is a baby really timeline. a miracle for some people? I don't it could be. <laughs> Honey, I'm, I'm sensing some... Um, a tone that you're taking when well, you think that children are not miracles. No, I think that parents are not miracles. I oh, think okay. there's a lot of horrifying parents out Horrific there. parents? Yes, yes. They're terrible, some of them. And then we get these kids that have no guidance and yeah. end up turning into Amanda Knox, who is right. wonderful, by the way, and not guilty, but you think she might be a murderer. So right. that's, you know what I'm saying? But wouldn't you want that to be not guilty, but have people think you're a murderer so that they don't mess with you? That's a good because point. Because that's a good boundary issue where it's like, oh, Claudia is a, might be a murderer, <laughs> so I'm not going to push her buttons. Right, and then or you, you don't have to do anything. You, well, you might want to push Jim. To a lesser extent, Yeah, Jim's. Jim has I a won't. booming voice, so it could be intimidating. Well, I mean, Jim is protected by your reputation mm-hmm. if you're a killer. That is true. Or a potential killer. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's got that going for him. Would you ever do this? Be in a tryst of, of uh, some kind of a three four way or something? Not like how it's going, and then kill. Is a that Brit? an invitation? Do I need to call Katie? I'm asking <laughs> where you are on this whole thing morally. Would you do it if you had to? If you killed a Brit in a sexual tryst? Well, it sounds illicit. I mean, a Brit. I don't know. Maybe if it was an Irishman, it would be. I would feel okay. differently about it. But uh, I'm not a tryst kind of a gal. No, I'm kind of like a one. You know, I I can't focus. It's more right. of like an ADD. It's thing. It's a focus thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not Too like much a going moral on. thing. Yeah, like oh, I feel like a whore. No, right. just like uh, wait. Who's is that? I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. And then it's they got to be organized. Yeah, you got to have some. Uh, you you need somebody to organize it for you. Right. Actually. You need like a coach, I think, like Chris Jenner. Right. Yeah. Like a coach and like a team. Yeah. Now we're now we're talking. We're talking about teamwork. Yep. Um, our fans don't know about that, but we're trying to coach them up. That's an interesting thing. Amanda Knox. We'll be following up to find out wh- where they go on their date and how it worked out did they have pasta is somebody gluten-free it's yeah. Like important yeah did they get diarrhea because they didn't realize they had celiac disease you celiac know? right let's go to the next one um how picking your nose could increase the risk of alzheimer's and dementia yes Whoa. a lot of you on the listening to this are in trouble yep they don't remember though so of course you know the New York Post has to start with like one line that they feel is the funniest joke in the world. I love the New York Post. <laughs> so the first line is don't go digging for gold in your golden years. Oh. Okay. God, that's <laughs> don't go chasing <laughs> waterfalls. <laughs> Uh, So new research suggests that picking your nose could increase your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. Bacteria can travel through the nasal cavity's olfactory nerve, streamline through a pick, reach the brain, and create markers that are a telltale sign of Alzheimer's disease. Create markers? I don't understand. I don't understand part of that. I understood the words that you used, but I didn't understand (laughs) the the entire sentence. It's like picking your nose could establish brain markers that cause dementia. So what does that even mean? There's a bacteria called Chlamydia pneumonae. Yeah. A germ linked to respiratory infections, infections, including pneumonia. And, uh, 
uh, using the olfactory nerve as an invasion pathway to assault the central nervous system. Assault. All you got to say is brain pneumonia, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> yeah, like, People are running chlamydia, around. Chlamydia, <laughs> assault. Yeah, <laughs> you got brain pneumonia if you pick your nose. Yeah. I mean, break it down into terms that uh, street people could get. That's who watches this show. <laughs> well, they, they don't probably... know all your neurotransmitter. You... We're not scientists, <laughs> Shannon. I mean, God, we got to break it down for people who have brain pneumonia. Yeah. That's right. And they Your brain done got sick on you because you were picking your damn nose. You elbow deep in your nostril, and that's going to cause your brain to go silly. God, <laughs> people don't get it. No, they're putting chlamydia in their nose. Yes. So you should not scratch yourself before you pick your nose. Yes. I think, is that the message that they're saying in that article? I don't know. I'm not I understanding. I think it's maybe you should put another finger that's cleaner in there. Yeah. So, I don't know what the mm. answer is to this. It's a hard solution. It is. It's a solutions-based podcast, though, so we're going to try to figure it out. What are some of the comments, Shannon? I mean, there's got to be some people just weighing in. Olfactory sense? I mean, what are we, graduates of something here? <laughs> Olfactory? Pick the best comments. <sighs> There you go, Claudia's in the spirit. Uh, let's see. First one is, <clears throat> oh, so just to let you know, this study was done on mice. It wasn't done on humans. So that's where this is coming from. Mice can pick their noses? <laughs> and get chlamydia? <laughs> I'm stuck it on chlamydia. It was only done on mice? <laughs> Shannon, that's so anticlimactic. <laughs> So the first comment is, makes sense. My mouse has a nasty habit of picking his nose and always forgets to close the door when he leaves the house. That's pretty solid. Oh, yeah, that's this pretty This guy good. made a cute mouse comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He didn't go dirty on he it. He took it to Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. There's some really long ones. I'm trying to skip those. Um, okay. This person said, I, uh, Scott Dog, I once dated a girl who picked her nose so much, her head eventually collapsed. True story. Wow. Hmm, that sounds legit. <laughs> I think that Scott did something to her, and he's blaming the nose picking. <laughs> yeah, the it's thing. like she had hammer marks in her head, but I he's think blaming Scott it on Alzheimer's. He feels like a misogynist who did domestic abuse and murdered his partner. I think that sounds And now right. he's writing a comment about it. But he then picked her nose, and she got Alzheimer's post post immune what is that word posthumously postpartum. yeah postpartum no posthumously posthumously <laughs> posthumously that's pretty funny after <laughs> post death yeah that thing um let's see one person one says more. uh this study confirms that it's safer to pick someone else's nose as long as you wash your hands first all right well that's that's a person who's into um that's like a fetish. Yeah, it's like an OCD Picking thing. someone else's yeah. nose. First your OCD. You still have the germs, but then you can blame somebody and go, yeah. oh, it's his fault. It's not my fault. He picked my nose yeah. and he didn't clean his hands first. Yeah, the perversion doesn't even get addressed. It's just that yeah. that other person but is I dirty. I think it's like COVID, we all washed our hands more. So this was probably prevented. It's one yeah. of the silver linings of COVID. That's true. So you were free to pick your nose more as long as you washed your hands. Antibacterial soap. Of course. Woman 21 gives birth on flight, names baby after unbelievable birth story. Shannon, this has got us reeling. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> a young mother gave birth to her baby boy 36,000 feet in the air. Mm. Kendra Roden, 21 of Hartford, Connecticut, was cleared to fly by her doctor at 32 weeks with her due date set for October 23rd. She decided to take a trip in September with her family to enjoy the warmth of the Dominican Republic sun before wel welcoming her, ba her baby boy. So she started to experience cramps while she was sitting on her on her seat. She was with her sister, and then she the cramps kept getting worse, <clears throat> getting closer together, and then her water broke. So she ended up delivering the baby in the air. She said the flight attendants were very helpful, yeah. and then she ended up naming the baby Skylin because S because it was born in the air. Oh, I thought mm. the, the, they would name the baby Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Extra leg room. <laughs> but which, I mean, oh God, this is such, this hits so close to home because we travel so much. Oh, when I thought you meant because we have babies so much on planes. Babies on planes. Yes. It's like the snakes on planes yeah. are going to eat the babies that we're having on planes. And it just feels like another movie. It and it's just like the drink cart comes around and your water breaks. And it's like, can I offer you a beverage? It's like, I have my own. Yeah, I just need a straw. My water broke. Yeah. And what's with this pesky baby coming early, Shannon? <sighs> I don't know why 
uh, the baby came early, but they sent the baby. The baby is okay. They he I don't know if it's a girl or a boy, but they were sent to the premature uh, arrival facility, and they were scrambling to determine what the nationality would be of the baby. A sky but, baby. <laughs> because they were Clown. going from the U.S. to DR. Right. So it's like what. Oh my God! Could that yeah. kid be president? That could be contested. <laughs> I don't know. Or presidente. Presidente. Yeah, the president of the. Oh my God. President of the oh, sky. Oh, Mike. Mike, <laughs> you were so right about this. It says the Rodin family went to the American embassy to confirm the newborn's American nationality and expedite his emergency passport, which lists his birthplace as quote in the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's been. It's up in the air. It's up in the air the entire time. Oh, that's good. God, I love it. I hope this kid doesn't have a turbulent life. <laughs> God, we've got to come through with these jokes, guys. We've got to get it done. Our fans deserve it. They have such tough lives. It's almost like they were born in the air. Yeah, and they're still um, up there. They're still up there. So um, they named the baby Skylark. Skylin. Skylin. Skylark. Isn't that a car? Sky, yeah. <laughs> yeah or Skylur. Skylur was Skylar, more of a traditional yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, God, they were in the. Um, how about stratosphere? That's a good one. Yeah, but I don't know that they they were only thirty six thousand feet up. So thirty six thousand is, is that high. Stratosphery. I don't know. It's the, that's still the troposphere. Oh, okay. I took Earth science, I, and I'm trying to prove it to you. I'm impressed. Yeah, pretending to. And be. the Earth has three layers: the crust, okay. the mantle, and their core. You mean the flat Earth? <laughs> the flat. Yeah, the Earth is flat now. Oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and if you sail too far, pirates will get you. Yeah, there you go. It's okay. all it's all uh, proven. Pre Columbus. Yeah. I wonder what people are saying about this, Shannon. What's the interwebs? What's the internet saying about these? Well, they actually included because this story was obviously posted on TikTok in September. Of course, of it course. was. The whole birth <laughs> yeah, was everything's on, on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. And so they actually included some of the comments from the TikTok. Yeah. And the three that they listed, one said, "Born in the air is the biggest flex." The next one says, "Now that gives a new meaning to airborne." And then another person says, "Not the baby being airdropped." That's funny. That's kind of that funny. one's not bad. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the airdrop work yeah, in there somewhere. Apple. Yeah, but yeah, if something the baby it grows up and um, encounters adversity, you know, they could say that I was born to fly. Yeah, you're trying to clip my wings. Yeah, like all of these air things that baby can say they as can their make narrative. All the references as their narrative. Always. You're trying to discriminate me. You, let me get it again. You're trying to discriminate against me because I'm a sky person. I'm not a land dweller like you freaking losers are, okay? I wasn't born underwater. I wasn't born on your stupid earth. I was born in the sky. I'm a child of the sky. I'm a star child. A moon <laughs> child? A solar baby? Come I, on, I, Shannon. I, I think star child. Star child. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's more to the my name. Oh, is, my God, there's more to their this? Their head is always in the clouds. Your head is in the clouds. <laughs> there you go. Uh, somebody's going to say that to them when the They're, kid is in school and go, I was born in the sky. That's Get why. away from me. Yeah. You're fired. I don't care if you're tenured. You're taking on me. <sighs> there, that's such a good one, so the, the name is longer than what I just said because mm -mm. I looked at the wrong part Ooh. of the article. So it's Skylin, which is S-K-Y-L-E-N. Okay. Kayvon hyphen air. Yeah. Francis. Skylin K. Von Air Francis. It's too choppy of a name. So yeah, it doesn't flow very, very well. random. The Francis yeah. doesn't fit in. The uh. cave, what is the cave? Cave in? Uh, you know, if I ever have a baby in the, in the air, I'm going to name my son Cumulonimbus Vecchion. <laughs> <laughs> it flows, it rolls off the tongue, it, it gets the message across. Memorable, easy, Cumulonimbus. in your face. Nobody's going to question it. What was the scary uh, cloud's name, Shannon? The ones that roll in? Cumulonimbus were the big puffy ones, and the other ones were. What is nebulous? Is that anything to do with clouds? No, <laughs> I don't think nebulous is a cloud. Cumulonimbus, it's another C cloud, another C yeah. word. Cumulonimbus. I googled scary cloud. It said wall cloud. <laughs> what is it? Wall. Is. Wall. Yeah. Huh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cu Cumulonimbus is number one. Right. But there's so there's six of them that you might see during a thunderstorm. I'll know it when I hear it, Shannon. Okay, so that cumulonimbus was the first one. Second one is a shelf cloud. Nope. Never heard of Third it. Third one is the wall cloud. Nope. These are fake and made up. <laughs> Fourth one is a funnel cloud. Nope. Lie. That's a lie. lie. One, <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> Fifth one is a scud. Nope. Okay. Never heard oh, wait, of it. That more. sounds like a dirty cloud. <laughs> Mamatis. Nope. Mamatis. 
That's it. That was it sounds six. like you're just making words up in the <laughs> studio, <laughs> Shannon. Promise, I promise. My Mattis. <laughs> My Mattis. <laughs> okay. That's it. It's a cumulonimbus and a cirrus. Cirrus cloud. Cirrus. Cirrus cloud. Cumulonimbus and a cirrus cloud. And if I had twins and one of them was good and one of them was bad, cumulonimbus versus cirrus. It's my Love sky it. version of Cain and Abel. Yeah. So that's what I would do. I wow, like that was it. a long way to get to that joke. I apologize to the fans. <laughs> any other um, any other comments, Shannon? Um, they're actually being really mean towards the woman <laughs> in the right. comments. And I don't know if we want to share those. Uh, uh, let's see. This one says, it's usually the other way around to get it. No, it's, I don't want to be offensive to the family. Uh because the family listens to the show. No, totally. I just know, but they're like really mean. I feel oh, like it okay, goes against yeah. the spirit of the show. It does. The, the spirit of the show is not mean. It's an investigatory show. And having a child in the air is very special. And journalism is not mean. So. Does that increase your sky miles? <laughs> the kid is born a super medallion member? God, he's probably going to get a first class all the way now. Wait, was this one of the ones where she's claiming she didn't know she was pregnant? No. Oh, okay. That would have made the okay. story much I know, sexier. that's why I was like, wait, are we missing that she part She knew that it? she wasn't supposed to be due for a while, so she was going to take a quick t- oh, trip to the oh, DR. I missed that, I'm sorry. And then come back. She okay. was cleared. She was cleared to fly before gotcha. she... Probably by the same doctor, your primary care <laughs> Obviously, physician. in his tight khakis. Tight yeah. khakis. <laughs> so gross. Was the father on board? Uh, I said, it just said her sister. Okay. But uh, yeah, they're they're actually they get pretty racist. The comment. Oh right, my god! Yeah, I don't want any of that. They're all terrible. None of that on the yeah. show. Let's move on. Giselle Bunch's net worth: a full breakdown amid Tom Brady's divorce. Our fans, this podcast is reeling from the Tom Brady Giselle Bunch and divorce. Tom Brady, All Star quarterback, the goat, the best of all time. Yep. Giselle Bunch and supermodel marriage, power couple. We love them here. We support both of totally. them. Totally divorced. I'm torn apart. They couldn't work this out. Really torn apart. I really wanted them to work it out, and they're not. And I guess now they're fighting over money or what's going on. I mean, Tom Brady, they lost the last three games. I know. Yeah. And I don't even really watch football, but I feel like he came out of retirement even though he was barely retired. <laughs> and now— you think, I think that's what it was. Like, everybody is saying, I don't know what the, I don't know what the actual facts are, obviously. Yeah. Close to the family, but— They're saying that he retired. She wanted him to retire to take some of the responsibility at home, but he unretired and once and 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 went back to football. And then that was what iced her. And she was like, "Well, if you're going to unretire, you're being selfish. You're not thinking about the family." Right. And I've I've dealt with this for long enough. I supported you through seasons and seasons, and now it's time to retire. And he goes, "Look, I'm not injured. I still playing at a high level, so I don't want to retire." And I think that's the argument that they were making. I agree. I think it's the same thing. I think she feels like, you know, she put her career on hold. Yeah, she did. To take care of the kids. Right. While he pursued his career. Right. And uh, they, I, I mean, obviously, like you said, we don't know these people personally, but I think they must have had an agreement, like after a certain point in time, he's going to retire. And then... Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm doing the Italian thing, talking with my hands. I'm like making pizza while we talk. No, our but, fans appreciate that you know, because so, they don't understand a lot of words. <laughs> yeah, so I got to like uh, act it out. But I, I, I do agree. I think that he promised her something and then he realized, I don't want to. I am the best of all time. Yeah, and I want to And once I quit, once I quit, it's going to be over. I got to at least wait for my skills to diminish. I have to get a couple more concussions, even though I don't know if he's ever had one. No. But yeah, I didn't think so. But he doesn't want to be a commentator right now. If he's I still think, playing, I think it's a thing where it's like if you're at a high skill level, you don't it. want to retire because once you retire, it's oh, you're never going to do yeah. it again. He's been in 20 years in the league, the best ever. So he just wants to play it out. He says, let me play this out till my skills diminish. I agree. But you have a good point about the family thing. Like she doesn't want to do the whole family thing by herself. And yeah. she has a career exactly. that she wants to um pay attention to yeah and i mean people probably make fun like well it's just modeling and versus what now, he's she has a doing. whole com- she has like, a bunch of companies like she's oh, worth yeah. more money than he is yeah she's got a lot going on right and, and i think she doesn't really get the credit from fans of you know that are more of the football fans yeah. so they think like what is she complaining about she's got it so easy it's like well it's not about what's easy it's what you guys agreed to Right. So, but I mean, I understand. Sounds like you picked a side here, Claudia. No, because I and actually it sounds understand. like you are, are modeling feminist behavior right now. 
you're rooting for the woman. I love Tom Brady. I have no connection to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the New England Patriots. I just love his story. I love his story, too, and I'm just trying to pretend that I give a shit about women's stuff, but right. uh, really, I could see why he wouldn't want to retire. Yeah, so. he doesn't want to retire yeah. yet, but she shouldn't have to deal with those kids all by herself. It's kids a, can be nightmares. I'm sure they can. I know I probably was one, so I... Were you a handful? See. No, I was actually really shy and just, like, I sat back and watched everything from the yeah. sidelines, because I like crazy family, yeah. total chaos. I think that's the same thing Amanda Knox said. I think so, to the too, cops. but I don't look like I... <laughs> I watched everything from the sideline, yeah. from the choking, to the sexting, to the right. murder. To the blood, to, right, to hiding the evidence. I watched it all she from the She watched side. it all from the sidelines, yep. Claudia. Likely story. No hands in the pot on that one. <sighs> yep. Do you like how my tone got accusatory towards you? I kind of, it's sexy. I turned on you. You said it's a sexy podcast, so I'm going to find horrible things sexy. <laughs> things got heated in this studio. Yep. You guys are not feeling the chemistry. Oh, yeah. But the cloud went from cumulonimbus to cumulus yeah, right in the studio. Was. Yep. Whew. God. So you took Giselle's side hard on that one, and you didn't. And I, I did... like her name, though. The U has two um, yeah, the, dots over it, like Motley Crue. That, yeah, I love that. Because Monsters of Rock. Yep. I tried and, to bring it back to you. And Motorhead has it. And Motorhead yep. has it, too. And yep. they worship the devil just in time for Halloween. And who doesn't? Yep. Next story. I, oh, Sh Shannon, are there any comments on that one? Because people are probably taking sides. Now, this is not a Johnny Depp, Amber Heard situation. Ooh, I love there that story. Is it dirty? What? The story between Johnny Depp. I resent well, Johnny Depp. Well, the bedspread was dirty. Oh, she shit on God. it. <laughs> she did a number two. Are we not supposed to swear on this podcast? No, you could okay. say it's freedom of speech. Uh, well, I didn't know if my rights and my freedoms were you know, allowed to be. Well, you hate the American flag as a tattoo, <laughs> so I don't know where you stand on it. But I love it on a hat. You love it on a hat? No. Okay. I don't give a shit about one way or the other wearing the American flag. Okay. Well, we like to do a pledge at the end of the uh <laughs> <laughs> the end of the podcast so i don't know where you stand on that but we'll i sit just kidding okay i don't kneel though <laughs> okay what is going on are people choosing sides with this shannon yeah for the most part they seem to be on tom brady's side. tom brady is winning this pr war because men if it's because everybody hates women oh my god it's women right. get a bum rap uh, yeah you know? see that's why is I... quarterback a better job than model I don't, well, they both have tight ends, I guess. I oh, my God. <laughs> Claudia, you nailed that one. You set yourself up and you dunked on this podcast. Damn, that's what I do. God, you dunked all over 45 this podcast. Minutes. <laughs> no, you had a lot of good ones. Oh, but that you. one was, I mean, our fans have nosebleeds from that one. Hey. Because you spiked the ball right in their stupid little faces. So volleyball of me. God. She does have a perfect ass, though. I just want to. I think so there. too. Is that inappropriate? I think so to too. Say I wouldn't go on record as saying so. Yeah. No, women have rights. They can also have a tight backside, but they can also have rights. Can it be acknowledged by can, another woman? You can take your tight backside to vote. You know That's it. what I say. All right. And yes, it can't be acknowledged by another okay, woman. Then I'm saying we're it. sexy. They're sexy. We're complimenting them. We're talking about their marriage. We have our opinions. They have our, their opinions. Women have the right to choose, and they can also vote, and they can read. It's like things are heating up. Yeah, eventually they'll be able to write. It's yes. getting crazy. It's getting wild. And some there. of them can write books. Maybe. Maybe. I left my nightmare first date early because of these red flags. What are these red flags, Ooh. Shannon? So this guy is from, uh, he's of French descent. He is currently living in LA and is an actor. <gasps> So this he, does not sound good. He, oui, oui. he posted about his first date with an American woman. And he said, quote, I arrive at the restaurant. First of all, her name's Kimberly. It's not my favorite name. It's fine, but she's pretty. It's no Skylard. <laughs> no, Skyland. <laughs> Skyland. It's no Skyland. Can I first say he's already, he's being more picky than me here. He yeah. just doesn't like her name. Shannon, stop trying to give yourself the advantage <laughs> over um, a, a French douche. This guy's obviously a douche. She's like, I don't like her name. I don't like her name. Uh, so we sit down and we take the menu and she looks me in the eyes yes. and she tells me she doesn't eat gluten. Oh, my God. I am on this guy's <laughs> side now. How do you not eat gluten? Yeah. Italians? Italians got to eat gluten. God, we love gluten. I don't care if my stomach's out to here. I'm eating my gluten. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm eating my gluten too. Yeah. You and your stomach's it. out to here. Take a flight because right. you're pregnant, there right? There you go. Let it out in the air. Let it out in the air. Let the baby out in the air. Air the baby out. Yeah. Or the cu- you- cumulus. What is it? The cumulonimbus. Name? Yeah, cumulonimbus fart. Yep. So he says, you don't eat gluten, but how can you not eat gluten? He continued in a reenactment of the fateful conversation. Gluten is my life, Kimberly. Gluten is croissant. Gluten is baguette. How do you not eat gluten? Okay, I don't agree with this guy's stupid French <laughs> foods, but I agree with the non the gluten policy. I love this guy. I love where he's coming from. I love that his makes angle. Sense to me. Kimberly is wrong. Kimberly, if you're watching this, you're wrong. Stop sitting down and just naming your uh, food allergies. That's not the first thing you should be doing to people. Your food allergies. It's like, how about how are you? How was your trip over? Oh, it was raining. I hate. I'm anti condensation. Aren't you <laughs> anti carbs though? No, I won't eat carbs if I need to lean out. That's what, so. There's that's what gluten. That's where all the gluten is. Yeah, maybe she was. It's in the to carbs. Maybe okay. She's I'm just not gonna. Sh- I'm not gonna. People are saying it like they have. If you have celiac disease, she didn't I understand. Shannon. <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> I think you're finish. gonna turn around here. <laughs> celiac disease is one thing, but there's these people who are acting like they have celiac disease. They're advocates against gluten and. They're advocates. It's not so much. You could quietly not eat gluten. You could quietly do it. But these people have to like announce everything as part of their identity. And that's what I don't like about it, Shannon. But what if she needs to what if she needs to find something on the menu that is gluten free? You can do it without announcing it. The first thing you say when you sit down on a date and you make eye contact with somebody. You don't know that's the first thing she said. That's what the article says, Shannon. When, when, When they looked at the menu, she's like, oh, I don't need gluten. Is did she say it like thing? that or did she make know. eye contact with him and go, I don't eat gluten? <laughs> it just says like, she tells right. me she doesn't eat gluten. Let's keep going with this article. <laughs> Let's find out who's right and wrong here, Shannon. We need to get the facts here. Let's get the facts. <laughs> so then he ordered a glass of wine, right. hoping it would curb his apprehension about the date thus mm-hmm. far. And it was then that Kimberly told him she had also sworn off alcohol. How could you not drink alcohol in your life, Kimberly? Questioned Pacheco who regularly asks his American followers about commonplace American attitudes he he just doesn't understand. Alcohol is joy. All right. Well, I agree that you shouldn't drink. Uh, no drink. I don't drink alcohol. I don't either. I don't drink it. But it's if this guy wants to have fun, this guy should not be shaming her for not drinking alcohol. But it's like, oh, it's like it sounds like a fun preference thing. Yeah, I think if he's... He should be allowed to drink alcohol on the date Yeah, without, like, shaming her. Yeah, because she's not shaming him, right, mm-hmm. Shannon? He, she well, according to Shannon, yeah. she's doing fun responses. Well, she also wasn't shaming him for eating gluten. Right. She's just right. saying her I don't things. eat gluten. I don't drink alcohol. He's kind of being like, what? You're a stick in the mud. Exactly. Meanwhile, that's the way I live. <laughs> As a stick in the mud. <laughs> I'm not a stick in the mud. I'm actually a pretty fun guy. Yeah, Claudia. I, I You've gather. been around me in um, I've witnessed work it. situations. And there was no alcohol involved. And there was no alcohol involved. And On it was either end. Fun. It but was. I didn't come up to you and go, I don't drink alcohol, Claudia. Get out of my mace. And we were at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and you slammed a bottle over my head. I remember that. <sighs> that was fun. That was fun. But so he, yeah. just to finish it, so he... Uh, left the restaurant without saying goodbye and said, I couldn't stay there. I'm sorry, but I can't have a love Those relationship. Those two things happened and he had, he left? Yep, he said he could. I can't have a love relationship with someone who doesn't eat gluten and doesn't drink wine. Okay, that guy's out of his mind. Yeah, that's a little That's excessive. a little much. He, yeah. She could still be fun in other ways. Yeah, and what yeah. if she was hot? I mean, and not what that if that's she was the most important thing. It obviously. is the most important thing. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. It's most important thing is if you're hot. It's because if you don't know them yet, you have to at least be attracted to yes. see if you want to know them. And you're never going to get to go to Italy with them and kill another person. Uh, and blame it on somewhere. someone else. You know, yes, and get tried and prosecuted in their weird system that right. they have, and then go back and visit, and, and go like, back on the anniversary, right? Celebrate. I was on this guy's side, then he lost me, then I was on his side again, and then he lost me again. I'm so I think it's the girl. The girl wins on that one. I give it to the girl. On I give that it to one. the girl on that one. That's not a red flag. People have preferences. It's not a red flag, Frenchie. Okay. Get your act together. Oh, I'm adventurous. I eat bread and wine. It's like, good. You'll die early then from eating that nonsense that's no good for you. You're going to oppress everybody else who withdraws from it? And I will eat carbs sporadically, Shannon, but it's on my own terms. This was on her terms. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Shannon, you're trying to nail me today. <laughs> you're trying to nail me today <laughs> because this is a date, Shannon, <laughs> and that you've been on and you're putting yourself in this woman's position. No, not at all. And if this guy had a neck tattoo, you would drink wine and eat bread. Oh. I do drink wine and eat bread. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't eat an animal, though. An animal. You wouldn't eat an animal? Mm-mm. What if the guy was a little bit of an animal? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's do the last one because Claudia, I've already kept you here. Yes. And it's been wonderful. Oh, I thought you were going to say oppressive. Well, same thing as wonderful. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah that <laughs> no, is I'm true. just kidding. I love it. I think they can merge. Yeah. Wonderfully oppressive. Yeah. Cause some people are into being oppressed. Yes. They like it. Um, Texas business under fire for now hiring non-stupid people sign. This hits home Ooh. for us. Uh, this may be the most blunt help wanted ad of all time. A business owner has offended some Pasadena, Texas residents after hanging up a large banner on his property that reads, now hiring non-stupid people. Uh, we're trying to weed out the people that do come in. We hired one last week that lasted three days. Um, and then, so he is saying that they've had a bunch of terrible employees and he's trying to stop that from happening. But people in the neighborhood say, what does that say to prior employees? Oh, we think you're stupid, so we're trying to hire anybody that we think is smarter than you. Uh, the fact that they felt so emboldened to put something up there like that, it's disgusting, it's distasteful, and it's unprofessional. Well, I think the stupid people can't read it, can they? <laughs> I was thinking, how would they know they're stupid yes. so they wouldn't know to not apply? <laughs> no one thinks they're stupid. Everybody thinks they're smart. That's right. And the people that are really stupid tend to be more vocal and opinionated, right? right. Yeah. And it's probably the people commenting on this article. What is the place, Shannon? It's a, a pet. It's a pet place. Pet, <laughs> pet, pet, pets resort. Right. And you got to be really smart to work at one of those places. It's a pet daycare. As you know, yeah. It's a pet resort. A pet, it's a pet daycare center. A pet daycare mm. center. Mm. You just have to have a. You don't have to be that smart to work at a pet daycare center. You just have to have a, I have a relationship with differ. animals. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. That's the point. It's like and you have to feed them and you have to be nice to them. Yeah, it's not like you're reading to them. Right. <laughs> or teaching them. Yes, anything. you're not teaching them anything. Yeah. Wow. Also, the uh, the examples he gives don't really sound like they were stupid people necessarily. It says the pet daycare owner said previous staff were unmotivated, often paying closer attention to their cell phones than the pets they were being paid to look after. Repeatedly, he would say, get off your cell phone. You've got dogs to watch. OK, put the cell phone up. Go back out. Go back out there. 20 minutes later, she's back on her cell phone. At least be as smart as I am, he said. Wow. So it's yeah. just that they I mean, that you're, I guess, young people that are just distracted. Yeah. yeah. You got to focus on the dog. If you have a pit bull. You can't just be on your phone. That pit bull is going to attack people. Of course, yeah. obviously. And we attack people on this podcast sometimes. Because we're human pit bulls. We're human pit bulls. That's right. And I don't think it's stupid people. It's it's these kids on their phones. They're just entitled, I guess we would say. Well, maybe they're trying to make a TikTok. Or maybe they're applying for another job because they hate where they're working. That's true. Morale is probably <laughs> They told low. us we're stupid. Yeah. We want to find another job. Yeah. I wonder if these animals were free-ranged. <laughs> You just let them go and then I can be on my phone. Yeah. Free ranged pets. That makes sense. You don't want to keep them caged up. Just you like don't. you can't cage up someone's creativity. <laughs> they need to be on their phones. I, I'm against this guy. I think that the workers are right. I do too. Be I'm on, on your side. phone. Make a meme. Yeah, do a TikTok. You know? It takes work. a lot of brains to make a meme and to do TikToks. It's not that easy. No, I can't even do I've never done it. I'm not even on TikTok. <sighs> You've got to start downloading I'm, and then I uploading. I, I don't even know. I know how to download. I don't know how to upload. Yeah. Well, it's important. It's important you have the right title and um, the right graphics. Music, all that yes. stuff. Yeah, like that's... It's, you're telling me that's dumb? That's a dumb person's game? Nope. God. They got it all backwards over there. This guy's got it all backwards, which is how dogs have sex. That's right. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> We're forwards. We don't know. We don't know all dogs, so we can't generalize. No, we can't. That would be discriminatory. Yes. And this podcast does, does not, not discriminate. No, it does not. No, no, no. Well, these have been some uh, investigations we really dug deep into. Shannon, are there, were there any comments on that? One about the stupid people? It does seem like people are on this guy's side. What? Yeah. As the first one says, every biz business owner I know thinks this right now. Most of their applicants on unemployment hope not to be hired. And others have little or no interest in adding value to an organization in exchange for a paycheck. People don't want to get paid? 
I think it's that they're lazy, but yeah. maybe not stupid. Maybe yeah. lazy is different than stupid. Maybe. Yeah. Not always, but right. maybe this. But the stupid this... people know the difference? No. <laughs> they don't know the difference between lazy and stupid. They Definitely think it's all not. one thing. No. Because they don't know words. Yeah, they don't. And they don't know, know words, definitions. And they don't know how parts to of get off the couch. Yeah. And they don't know how to get off the couch. Yeah. And if you think we're talking about you behind your back, we're talking about you to your face. Get off the couch and do it, guys, and keep supporting this podcast also. That's job number one. And you're doing a great job. And we freaking love you for it. And we will coach you and we will criticize you. This is not a comic hang. This is a investigatory podcast that also teaches you life lessons. So go work at a pet store and get off your phone. That's what I would say. And don't be dumber than the animals that you're working with. God. Um, Claudia, anything to say to our fans before you go? Hi, fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than one it's more than one oh Were you waiting my gosh at Jim? yeah i thought that was our fan no of course i no i'm really is this a, um is jim human trafficking you it seems like he's watching you guys are watching <laughs> i've he's been... got to have eye contact with you the entire time i've been giving you you're the, safe right now the double you're safe blink. right now and we have a slew of um skank skanks here that will take jim down well you've been ignoring my signals okay. i've been doing the Blink twice. Right. Move. I sex pistol is All code right. for sex trafficked. You're not. I thought up you were blinking. I thought you were having some kind of a diabetic episode. <laughs> well, that's because he plies me with extra sugar so that I'll go into sugar shack. Is that what they call it? Sugar shack. <laughs> no, yeah. That, well, that's a shake shack. Well, no. Jim is on the other side, and I guess you've outed him as pro gluten. Yep. So, oh, he's so pro gluten. Yeah. It's, it's not God. even funny. These gluten people, man. Red flags. I mean, I'll eat it, but they suffocate you with it. Oh, my God. There's a lot of red flags, totally. which is the word we use now. I love it. I, I love, love it, it, too. Mm. Well, guys, we hope that you loved it Off of, on that note. Not off of that note. On that note, we hope that you love this episode. This was a fun episode and a great hang. I had Buy a Claudia's book. 100 Things to Hate Before You Die. 100 Things to Hate Before You Die. <laughs> This was a great episode. Thank you for coming Thanks in, Thanks for Claudia. having me. It was great to see you. It's great to see you. For Shannon, for Natalie, for Claudia, I'm Mike Vecchione. We'll see you guys next week.